Hello everyone, I'm back with some more important MCQs frequently asked in competitive exams and I've already made two videos on important MCQs so make sure to check them out after watching this video. So let's dive right in and start the video. Here's the question, microfilaria with a sheath surrounding it and two large nuclei at its tail tip. Identify the organism and here are the options. You must know that filarial worms are differentiated based on two key features, the sheath and the number of nuclei. So out of the four options, Oncocerca is the only one without a sheath. Alright, so we can easily rule out option D right away. Now let's focus on the other three options. They all have a sheath. So the differentiation between them will be based on number of nuclei. Okay, so just remember this, Vucheria bancrofti, which is the most common one, has a sheath, but no nuclei at the tail. Remember that. Number two, Brugia, Brugia mali, it has a sheath with two large nuclei at the tail, and which is exactly what the question describes. And number three, Loa Loa, it has a sheath, but multiple nuclei at the tail okay so let's quickly analyze the question again they have clearly mentioned that the filaria worm has a sheath with two nuclei at the tail so the answer to the question is brugia malai okay so our second question a farmer from kerala presents with fever respiratory distress and neurological deficit the reservoir of the causative organism is shown in the image. What is a likely associated organism? And these are the options. Nipah virus, Ebola virus, Zika virus, malaria. All right. So in this question, we have to analyze the image carefully. Then only we can answer the question. So if you observe the image, you can see a bat along with a fruit. So it's a fruit bat. And we all know that fruit bat is the reservoir of both Ebola virus and Nipah virus, right? So now analyze the question again. They have mentioned that the patient is from Kerala, right? So which has had previous outbreak of Nipah virus. So it's making it most likely cause. And the symptoms also mentioned here, fever, respite, distress, and neurological deficits. These are all hallmark features of Nipah virus infection. And so the correct answer here is Nipah virus. All right. Our next question, a 50-year-old renal transplant patient presents with watery diarrhea. Stool sample examinations reveal oocyst of size 30 into 15 microns. What is the most likely organism? And the options are Cyclospora, Cystoisospora, Cryptosporidium, and Microsporidia. And the image is also given in the question. So again, if the image is given, we have to observe the image carefully. And if you notice here, a blue background with red colored oocyst is given, which means the organism is acid fast. Okay, so among the four options, three are acid fast, cyclospora, cystoisospora, and cryptosporidium. These three are acid fast. Microsporidia is not acid fast and now uh, being reclassified as a fungus. It is no more a parasite, so we can rule it out immediately. Now, the most important clue in the question is the size of the oocyst. They have given the size 30 into 15 microns. And out of the three acid fast organisms, two are very small. Cryptosporidium, it is very small in size. And the trick to remember here is think of crypto, just like cryptocurrency, a Bitcoin. It's a coin, uh, so it is small in size. Similarly, cryptosporidium is also small in size. All right. Second, cyclospora. Cyclospora is again very small in size. It is around 8 to 10 microns. So cyclospora is also small. 
The third is cystoisospora. Cyst word. Cyst sound. The cysto sounds like a cyst, and cysts are usually big. So you can remember in this way, cystospora. Its size is around twenty-five into twenty microns, which quite matches the given size. So the answer here is cystoisospora belly, and this is the answer. Okay, so our next question: A diabetic patient recently recovered from COVID nineteen, present with facial pain and teeth pain. What is the next best investigation? And these are the options: nasal swab, MRI, serum ferritin, HbA one C. Okay, the first thing is the patient is diabetic and the patient had COVID nineteen. Diabetes, diabetes itself weakens immunity, and post-COVID patients who received steroids experience further immune suppression. So this leads to a fungal overgrowth, and one of the most dangerous fungus in such cases is mucor, which is also known as black fungus. And this fungus is responsible for fungal infection known as mucor mycosis, and they are very common in weak immune system, especially those with diabetes, ketoacidosis, or post-COVID steroid use. And this fungus is mainly present in the environment, and it can enter through the nose and spread via blood vessels. This mucor mucor can affect different part of the body like lungs, skin, nose, sinuses, brain. If you observe the question, the the patient has facial pain and teeth pain. So what does this tell us? It suggests the involvement of the nasal area and the sinus sinuses. So it means the patient has rhino orbital cerebral mucor mycosis. So they are asking what is the best investigation? So the most and the first step is MRI of the head. This is the first and the best option. It helps to visualize the extent of tissue damage. It shows how far the infection has spread. All right, but some might choose option A, nasal swab. But remember, the swab is used for confirmation. But MRI comes first to check the spread of the infection. So the answer here is MRI. This is the first step. Second will be nasal swab. Okay that's all for this video if you found it helpful do subscribe to my channel like the video and share it with your friends thanks for watching see you in the next video